Bob Maloney with me, who's okay. the deputy mayor for public safety. And I'm going to ask him the same thing. Okay, so I've been here for a bunch of these. Well, we haven't had a bunch, but <laughs> a, a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of those we have had, I've been here for them. So I compare this to 1996. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that storm? I do. What do you think? I think that's that's all the same. You know, in 2010, we had those back-to-back -back storms, Correct. and a right. lot of people confuse those as one. But this is like that rapid snow and heavy winds and, and uh, just exactly yeah, like, like that. It, like straight through. That's like right. Like that started Saturday night, all day Sunday into Monday morning. And yeah. then, you know. So let's bring us up to date. What are what are you, I first want to ask you, because I took a picture of this this morning when I was on my way in here about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, whatever. On President Street, I saw a National Guard vehicle with some mm -hmm. National Guard members. And they were helping out some folks getting some a ride somewhere. How many National Guard troops are deployed, uh, people are deployed in Baltimore and what are they here to do? So we have uh, over 20 vehicles and each of those vehicles come with two personnel and we, we pull the trigger on that early because uh, we knew we'd need to navigate the streets and that's one of the lessons we learned in, in the storm you're referring in 2010 um, because we got to be equal to all emergencies so they're split up amongst fire and police um, and fire and police personnel are embedded with them. They're, uh, they're in a transportation mode and, you know, to kind of help us move paces and stuff like that. Um, as well, you know, they're all over the, the uh, state doing that. We, and we, they're responding just to calls for service, am I correct? Yeah. From, from both fire police, as you said. Well, they're transporting our calls for service, so our personnel have radios in there and then they're dispatched with them and our personnel just tell them where to go uh, so they're familiar with the area. And, and we also were lucky enough to secure from uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car delivered. And we, we got like 70 or 84 by fours in on Friday, thank God. The National Guard's in Humvees. I mean, that's the photo that I took this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and, and that's, you know, and we, we keep them in play, too, for the really hard spots like West Hills and, you know, those hilly areas of the city where, you know, if we get a call, we need to get in there. Have you had to deal with anything so far that is a real challenge to, to try to answer? Well, that the, the fire that we had up in, in northeast. the northeast is, you know, anytime you a first alarm of fire, four engines, two trucks, the chiefs, the medic unit, they're all going there at once in this snow is a challenge. And, and that's what we need to keep in mind today. We're still in response mode. And and when there's emergencies, we uh, we have to get to them in this mess. I had a, I covered a situation in 1996. It was actually after the storm where trucks in, try, trying to fight a fire just got terribly stuck in like four feet of snow. Um, and let's move over here a little bit because this plow's coming through. So, you know, how, how are your vehicles able to manage when you get off these main roads and into the, you got to go everywhere. If you yeah. got a fire on a side street, you got to get to it. You know, a lot of it, I think, is the will of the people who are driving them. Uh, it always is a remarkable, the men and women of these, you know, fire and police and public works. And they just, you know, they just won't stop. And, and uh, they get to where they need to be because they know people need help. But... They're heavy. They have chains. Uh, we we put snow plows with DPW and uh, transportation put snow plows on our fire boxes. So in that room, when we have a fire go out, they deploy their plows with us. And the storm you're referring to, we actually had to change that from plows to backhoes so that you know they could go in in advance. And um, it's it's a really you know unified effort. Um, but these the challenges when you have this weather is is to uh, respond to those and that's why you know it was great everybody heeded the mayor's warning because we didn't have people getting stuck and we didn't we we didn't have the parking lot on 83 and that was because the citizens really cooperated and i was going to say you know i, I was going to ask you that we have seen some pictures from around the region where you know like i saw a picture of a ramp on 795 which has got cars scattered on it but it seems like the folks in baltimore city have really cooperated in you know, kind of getting someplace safe, get your car out of the way, and uh, and and stay in. Yeah, and and it's it's huge because uh, the essential people, not only fire and police, but like the people who work in assisted living and the nursing homes, and the hospitals, they know that when they go buy a car, they get a four-wheel drive vehicle. So it's, it's events like this. We want them to access the road too, or we would say, you know, for everybody, don't drive. So, but but if you don't have that vehicle and you don't need to be out and you can be home you know that that is the individuals we want to suggest to stay home so yeah it's important and it only takes one car to clog one exit ramp and then you know the situation exacerbates itself so yeah you know that's good and and uh it, it, you know it's everybody kind of working together so what do you anticipate your biggest challenge being you know for the rest of the day well you know the 
the the wind is the scary part of this forecast chris strong from the national weather service he's our local guy gives us a lot of good advice called last night and said the winds are going to be 65 miles per hour at 3 a.m that didn't come to fruition thank god but it's you know that monster storm system is sitting over us now and 65 mile per hour winds are, are nothing to mess with we anticipate more power outages also we know that there's going to be building collapses. We know that roofs are going to collapse because of the weight of the snow. So we just, you know, property can be rebuilt, right? We just want to make sure people aren't under them. And if, if they are under them, we're able to get to them. And we, we have, you know, I've always said this, I'm, I'm fortunate as the emergency manager, we have the best fire department and the police department in the country. And, and, uh, these guys have proven time and time again, they'll get there to help people. And it's, it, it's, it's just, you know, Baltimore's a great city to live in, you know that.